one of the most shocking events of the French Revolution, saw Marie Antoinette, the hated Queen of France, being taken to the guillotine. This happened on the 16th of October 1793, a month before the Queen's husband, King Louis XVI, had been executed on the same guillotine inside of Paris. He had even given his royal patronage to the guillotine and discussed using the slanted blade for it. But to many people across France, Marie Antoinette was a woman who would throw the suffering of the French people in their faces, as she would flaunt her lavish and expensive lifestyle in their faces, whilst people were suffering and they were starving. But the death and execution of Marie Antoinette shocked many, and the royal families across Europe were terrified that revolutionary ideas would sweep to their nation, and some even considered rescuing her, but it was too late. But what happened to her remains and her head after her execution was rather interesting, and one woman would break into a graveyard so she could get her hands on the Queen's head. Join us today as we look at the severed head of Marie Antoinette, and as always, to support our channel, please make sure to subscribe. Marie Antoinette was held inside of the conciergerie, which was a prison. She was held inside the same cell for the final 11 weeks of her life, and her imprisonment got worse and tougher, and the guards would treat her with a lot of disdain. Marie was not French, she was an Austrian princess, and in the years before her death she had lived a very wild lifestyle. When she arrived inside of France, she would be queen four years later, when her husband, Louis XVI, succeeded to the throne. But her marriage was not always the happiest, as the pair had different tastes in fashion, food and other ideas. But Marie would continue to spend huge amounts of money inside the royal court, and she would deplete the royal treasury to a huge extent. She became known as Madame Deficit because of this, and she continued to buy the most expensive clothes and gifts for her friends, and she would also gamble away much money at parties. Marie was foolish, and some claimed she had a good heart, as she would adopt some poorer children from the nation, but she was a woman who was an easy target for anger across the nation. The people saw her lavish lifestyle as a price of bread rose, to an extent that people could not afford, which led to people starving. The diamond necklace affair was also a huge scandal, which implicated the Queen, and she was seen as a thief by many because of this. A countess had tricked a cardinal into buying a massively expensive necklace on the Queen's behalf, and many thought that Marie was actually trying to steal this piece of jewellery, and she would not want to actually pay for it. This tarnished her reputation further, but when the revolution broke out, no one would have guessed what would happen to Marie Antoinette within a matter of years. The royal prison, the Bastille, was stormed, and revolutionaries stole weapons and arms from this, and there were huge riots across the nation, and huge demonstrations including one, in which women marched to the gates of the Palace of Versailles and demanded action. But the King and Queen were not officially arrested until June 1791, and then following this they tried to make attempts to flee to Austria, controlled Netherlands and other lands. But they left this far too late, and it got to the point where they were under too heavy a guard to be broken out of prison. The royal family were then held inside of the temple, and France was declared a republic as the monarchy would abdicate and give up the throne. This was the end of centuries-long monarchy inside of France, and the effects of this are still felt today, centuries on. But then the question came as to what to do with the royal family. Louis XVI, the king, was then placed on trial, and he would in January 1793 be sentenced to death for treason against the French people, and he would then be allowed to see parts of his family before his execution took place around a week after the death sentence was proclaimed. The king was executed on the guillotine in front of a huge crowd in Paris, and his final moments were shocking, in which he tried to protest his innocence, but he would be drowned out by army drummers, before he was swiftly strapped onto a board, and was then slid under the guillotine blade. The execution device took his head clean off, but Marie Antoinette was then following her husband's death, left in prison. She would be moved from the temple to the conciergerie, and months before her death she was moved to a place which became known as the antechamber to the guillotine, as it would become a waiting place where the condemned would be held before their executions. She was imprisoned for two months and was then placed on trial, and she was at the time just 37 years old. The Queen was a shadow of her former self, and she had white hair, and her skin was very pale. Her trial was gruelling, and she would have to last 18-hour days. There were a huge amount of accusations levelled against Marie Antoinette, including even incest, and much of this was a falsity, but it showed you what a hated figure she really was. The accusations shocked the court, and Marie did deny these, and she was graceful in her trial. However, her grace did not save her. 
she would be sentenced to death after being found guilty of high treason on the 16th of October 1793. She was also found guilty of conspiracy against the security of the state and depletion of the national treasury, which was something she could not really deny. But before her execution, Marie Antoinette had most of her white hair cut off and lopped short, due to the fact the executioners did not want it to trouble a clean cut on the guillotine. She would be executed at the Place de la Revolution, and at 12.15pm, she would walk onto the scaffold to meet Charles Henry Sanson, the executioner and his son and assistants. Sanson was the man who took the head of the French king, and the executioner was wearing a black mask, and he could never have imagined that he would now be executing the Queen of France. Marie's final words were actually in response to stepping on the executioner's foot, and she said, pardon me sir, I did not mean to, but she was then strapped to the board, which was slid under the guillotine blade. After a few final checks, the blade was released, and Marie's head was taken clean off. The executioner then retrieved her head from the basket that it fell into, and he showed it to the baying crowd, and he declared, Viva la République. After the execution of the Queen, her remains were then gathered up, and they were taken on a short journey, half a mile from the execution site, and were taken into a graveyard behind the Church of the Madeleine. But at the time, the gravediggers, who were tasked with burying the remains of the Queen in a common grave, were having a break as it was lunch, and the Queen's remains were just lying there, whilst the men dispatched to bury her were busy with their lunch. With this, Madame Tussaud, the famous waxwork modeler, would sneak into the graveyard, and she would quickly make a plaster cast and death mask of the head of Marie Antoinette. Madame Tussaud would take many moulds of many executed French figures, including Marie's husband, King Louis XVI, and she would do this at times to escape the wrath of the revolutionaries. But following this, Marie's remains were then thrown into an unmarked grave, and it was possible that in an act of disgrace, her head was thrown into the grave, and it may have then been placed at her feet, like her husband's head was. However, Marie's body would then be exhumed on the 18th of January, 1815, and it was identified by a number of different ways, including part of a stocking which was found, and was recorded as she was wearing this on the day of her execution. She was then given a Christian burial, and her royal remains inside of the necropolis of the French kings in the Basilica of St. Denis were laid to rest. However, the death mask that Madame Tussaud would create would show the Queen in her last seconds, and would show the anguish on her face as the guillotine blade fell. It shows the Queen with her short hair, which had been shaved for her execution, and her lips clasped together and her eyes closed tightly shut, and there are many other marks on her face. But Marie Antoinette was a figure of hatred in France, and many across the nation completely despised and hated her, due to the problems with finances that she encountered, with the fact she could not stop spending. She was a woman who was tragic in her final days, and they were a long departure from the lavish life that she lived. But in front of thousands on the same execution device that took the head of her husband, the French king, Marie Antoinette the Queen lost her head and her life. Everyone who saw it that day would not forget the day they saw the Queen lose her head. Thanks for watching. To support our channel, please make sure to subscribe, and once again, Thank you so much for watching.